Kong app, we have a unique challenge that we did not have before. Looking at the two sprites, the projectile on the right and the paddle on the left, we have to make it look to the user as if both of these are moving independently of one another and at the same time. How can we accomplish this? Well, ideally we'd like to use some sort of system Android resource to make it look like two things are happening at once. By using different tasks for the two different things that are going on in our game, we can make it look as though these two things are going on at exactly the same time. In the main thread, we can keep track of when the user is pressing buttons on the keyboard and make the paddle respond accordingly. Meanwhile, we can launch a separate thread for the game and use that to make the ball move independently of the paddle. So our design strategy for the Pong game is to start with the main thread. Have that thread build the surface and then after it's finished building to launch the game thread. The main thread will retain control of the paddle while the game thread takes over control of the ball. So with that design concept in mind, let's now code the Pong thread class which will extend the standard Android thread. The Pong thread is going to correspond to the game thread class that we discussed earlier during the design phase. This thread is going to need three private variables. The surface holder is going to get passed along to us when the Pong thread is first created. The Pong game engine object will be the actual Pong game itself that will keep track of the game state. And lastly, for convenience sake, we're going to keep track of our canvas. The canvas can be found inside the surface holder. Let's now make a constructor. When the user presses a key on the virtual keyboard, we need a mechanism to allow the main thread to use the Pong thread to inform the game that a key has been pressed. Let's build that utility function now. The last function we're going to write for our Pong thread is a standard run function for a thread. This run function is going to be called by the main thread only after it is certain that the surface has been finished being created. Once the run function is called on this thread, it's going to start up the game and continue playing it. Let's talk a little bit about what happens when the run function is called on this thread. We start off by writing a line to the log for debugging purposes. Then we're going to lock our canvas, figure out how big and how wide it is, and then pass that information on to the Pong game, which we're going to create for the first time. Then we're going to run into an infinite loop that's going to manage the ball, allowing it to move freely and bounce when it detects a collision. Even though it may appear as though the program will be stuck in this infinite loop, keep in mind that this loop is running in a separate thread than the one that's controlling the paddle. To get our Pong game working, the last thing we have to do now is go back to our main thread and put in all the references that we had previously commented out to this game thread. And here we are with our finished Pong game.